I want to read you this funny tweet. Global launch notice. We are excited to break the news to you that the global version of Love Live School Idol Festival 2 Miracle Live is launching soon in February 2024. However, this is the best part. We also want to inform you that the global version will close its doors on May 31st, 2024 and seize in-app purchases accordingly. We appreciate the love and support you've shown and we're committed to making these last few months an unforgettable moment. This reads like a joke, right? I immediately went to check the bio to see if this was a parody account. But oh, it's real. You know, I tend to be mixed on game announcements anyway. It's pretty much impossible to tell if you will like a game or not based on a few words or visuals, so you're running on fumes of base genre or graphics appeal for a few months at least between announcement and release you're stuck in this uncanny chasm of having less than zero opinions about a product. And I guess this is one way to prevent that, because anybody seeing this immediately visualizes the entire lifespan of the game. It's even easier to imagine if you've played it before. Yeah, the two doesn't mean that there are two miracle lives. It's a remake slash sequel thing to the original School Idol Festival. An incredibly influential and long-running mobile rhythm game. Released in 2013 and discontinued in 2023, supposedly to get replaced by this one. The idea of remaking it is understandable. An old app like that could not keep up with the demands of the modern gamer. Just look at the competition, which it partly inspired. Like Idly Pride, an idle idle rhythm game where all gameplay happens automatically and you just get to look at the pretty models. Arguably, that one was inspired by School Idol Festival All-Stars, different Love Live game, which also shut down in 2023. I'll explain. So, there were two Love Live games on smartphones, SIF for the hardcore players, and All-Stars, a more casual and aesthetically pleasing experience. They closed the servers for SIF and let out SIF2 in Japan as a replacement. Then they closed All-Stars, so SIF2 was the only option who had left. But then, in a funny prank, they announced that they would be shutting that down too after only one year in service, and since the English version took too long to make, they had to release both the announcement and shutdown notice at the same time, which is how this happened. It's honestly debatable who got the short end of this thorny stick, but of course that depends on if the game was any good. So I played it, and from what I can tell, it's the same as that 2013 version with a new lick of paint, so the gameplay is pretty simple. There are nine buttons, and they will ask you to either tap or hold them. If you mess up too much, you game over. That's it, that's like the second idea you would have for a rhythm game on a touchscreen. Let's have a lot of things to press, we don't have to make a controller for the arcades. There was one slightly unexpected feature for me, uh, where for these hold notes, not only do you have to start holding them at the right time, but you need to let go on the beat as well. But simplicity doesn't mean it's bad. Also exists with one button if you're epic, and there was more to it. You see, each button represented a different character. Each one had stats, which corresponded to one of three song types, and increased the score you got at the end. To play every song successfully, you had to expand your sorority and wrangle three different parties of nine idols each. They also had a health stat, and those with more health tended to have less of the other stats. So the strategy became clear, create a team with good health for songs that are more difficult, and slowly start phasing in idols with better scoring potential, taking skills into account. Skills gave every idol the ability to talk while they are singing all the time without stopping, even interrupting each other. Through this ritual, you got items to spend on leveling your character. And since higher level characters take more items to level up, it was a pretty good idea to spread that resource equally and not just dump everything into your one red-haired favorite. By the end of the service, I actually started getting into it. They successfully created the feeling of having to make this group work together as a unit each bringing something valuable to the table at different times. Even though I was sorely new at this, I completed some maps on the second highest difficulty. The feeling of quickly releasing and pressing a button at the same time was suddenly nice. Although, in order for that to happen, I had to turn off all the visual effects because the game was lagging very hard. But by that point, I already recorded a lot of footage with them turned on, so please, when you see that, cry for me a little bit internally, though. Don't make it too awkward for the people around you. Still, though, there was one obstacle left in front of me reaching a higher level. D4 DJ Groovy Mix, the game I kept playing instead because it was more fun. It's got the same idea of making a hard rhythm game, but it's interesting. You see, along with the tap notes and hold notes, you have this fader thing at the bottom of the screen. You can freely slide that horizontally around the playing field, and in order to score, it just needs to be at the right spot at the right time. You have to find the best opportunity to move it while you're tapping away. And then sometimes you also have to swipe the fader in the right direction with timing. On top of all that, you have these discs on either side which you need to scrub like a real DJ, and when you do, they will bump the notes up a bit. 
that feels like a gimmick, just a fun visual thing, nothing crazy, until you hit a situation like this. They mix you up, make you think about the fader and tap notes in a new way whenever they appear and they remind you to feel the rhythm, not just be guided by the buttons. Getting good at this game feels like flying. It's like patting your head while rubbing your belly and using one of those head scratchy thingies, licking your nose. There are problems, of course. Even though the controls are responsive, with all these buttons on a smaller screen, the hit detection gets confused about which action you're trying to do. The progression is not great. You just want your whole party to be members of the fictional <laughs> DJ unit Peaky Peaky eventually. Okay, not necessarily Peaky Peaky, but one of them is named Yuka Jennifer Sasago. Who cares that the progression is not good, though? At least I don't need to turn off the effects to full combo an expert song like the game that crashes on the title screen. I was really happy I had picked Maki as my navigator. She was here in the bottom corner telling me what to do because she sassed me all the time about not playing the game enough and I could pretend to sass her right back. Chop chop, you're not the boss of me. Stories, well pick one already. I don't want to pick anything. The stories in this game are four introductory sections where you get to know the characters group by group in the exact same way and four seasonal scenarios. I recorded those for posterity, but they're just inane plots of the characters planning a Christmas party or something. It sure would have been more exciting if we could receive these stories regularly, in small slices, over a long period of time. Don't know why they didn't do that. The Nijikasaki intro section was the best thing to come out of this, because there are 13 members, and they actually needed to take turns saying one sentence at a time, so nobody felt left out. Uh, you know what, Maki? I should have checked the inbox. You could receive text messages from each character in a facsimile of a message app, a mechanic lifted straight from Idly Pride, a game which spoils you on the entire plot of its anime prequel series in its opening cutscene, including who won the Venus Grand Prix. Unfortunately, the messages had the same problem as the rest of the text-based content. They didn't write enough. The idols introduced themselves in nearly identical ways, said they're normal, I promise. Then he made a group chat and congratulated a member every time there was a birthday. It sure would have been cool if the development team had time to make more of these and you could receive them as rewards for using a member a lot or something. That's a good idea, I should make these. At least, chatting with the members, their profile pictures changed to screenshots from the anime depending on what they said. Except for Tamari and Margaret, who were invented not long before the launch of the game, so they didn't have enough footage for them. I'll assume in-universe it's because they don't have Nitro. That would actually be a great feature. Imagine, every time you roast somebody on Discord, your avatar changes to that freaking COD kill cam. Or a really good gacha roll. Because yeah, the game had a gacha system. You could spend real money on this. And in all, in parentheses, last weeks of its life, there was a jacked up chance of getting ultra rare characters. But who cares, right? It's done. I mean, I spent my free rolls and I guess I enjoyed looking at them. Mario. Mario. Luigi. They're pretty pictures, but the investment wouldn't have paid out. There was no point in spending money on this. This marketing tactic is stupid! There's not really a moral here. This whole story is a blip embodied by that one fucking tweet. Every design choice, new or lifted from the old version, relies on having the game for a long time, which is the one thing they weren't willing to do. Bushiroad, the developer, is still losing its stock price, though this might not be the only reason. And Sunrise, the owners of Love Life, have been moving on. Doing more anime, releasing more music, and even a different, weirder, Japan-only app, which seems to be setting up its own closure more organically, with its focus on real-time storytelling and live streams. Because the thing is, all the games I've talked about today will disappear eventually. That's the nature of server-based infrastructure. But you need to put in the work to make that time worthwhile, and not just assume that it will feel special because it was limited. Spending our time talking about Love Live School Idol Festival 2 Miracle Live anymore is more trouble than it was ever worth. I'd rather read you the synopsis of Idly Pride. The Venus program is an idol scoring system that is entirely impartial, using AI and data to rank candidates based on an array of factors. Hi. I make more videos that are like this, and that are not like this. Subscribe for both. Bye.